Hello, everybody. Hey, Ricky. What's up, Ricky? Ricky's in the YouTube chat. How's it going, man? 2005 TXT 36 volt pads. PDS. How do you check the oil in the rear end? In a uh, in a PDS, the rear end oil it takes very little. The way that I do it is take the plug out and just uh, you get the gear oil that comes in the squirt bottle and you just put the put the the tip in the hole and just squeeze the 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 gear oil and force it in there and when it starts pouring out that's it that's enough just put the plug back in whenever it starts pouring out because if you'll notice that drain plug is not right in the bottom of the uh, gearbox it's kind of up on the side a little bit well what happens is is that gear all it does is just turns in that little that little section of the of the rear end and when it turns it picks up oil and brings it all over to the top just brings that that constantly bringing that oil to the top so it's really easy so but like i said it doesn't take very much just squirt a bunch in there until it starts running back out the hole all right anyway garage is now open i'm tim where uh i work for golf cart garage we come here every week and talk about golf carts uh, if you want to follow us on all the all the platforms that we have you can follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and all that stuff. That's the links that are that are going right there. So if you if you care to do that, uh, let's see. We're going to go over some regularly scheduled questions, and obviously we're going to participate with people in the live chat today. Uh, so feel free to say something. It says okay again. Thanks for your help and time. Well, that's no problem, Ricky. Thank you for being here, man. Uh, let's see. We'll see what we can do. Question number one, we'll get started. I have a 2002 club car and I am experiencing issues with my headlights at night. When I turn my headlights on at night, at first they are very bright. However, upon accelerating, they go dim. When I take my foot off the accelerator, they brighten back up. The batteries are fully charged and filled with water only two weeks ago. It is an electric 48 volt. All six batteries were replaced in 2020. Any idea what could be causing the headlights to dim on acceleration? Thanks for your help. Mason, what's up Mason? Mason from Minnesota. Good to see you too, man. Just picked up my 2022 Club Car Tempo Lithium. Nice, nice. Can't wait for golf. I wouldn't wait for golf season. I'd be riding around in that thing right now. <laughs> this is a nice car. Uh, question number one. Well, it's not unusual for headlights to dim but uh, when upon acceleration. But I have to ask you a couple of questions. So, since your car is 48 volt, your headlights are supposed to be hooked to 12 volts. Those are 12 volt headlights. So I have, my question would be, how are your headlights getting powered? Are they getting powered from a voltage reducer that's reducing your entire 48 volt pack down to a usable 12 for the headlights? Do you have four 12 volt batteries and your headlights are hooked to just one of those 12 volt batteries? Or do you have six 8 volt batteries and your headlights could be hooked to one of those 8 volt batteries? Now you have to understand the reason that they're going dim is that they're, you're experiencing voltage drop in, your, in the 12 volt system. Uh, my guess would be that your headlights are hooked to one battery and upon accelerating the voltage in that battery drops therefore your headlights go down but anyway i'd have to i'd have to ask you questions like that in order to be able to narrow down how are your headlights getting powered mason says it's too much snow just got eight inches oh okay well you know i've Last year it snowed here and I got to ride my golf cart around in the snow. It doesn't happen very often. You know, I don't, I don't get to do that very often, but it's pretty fun. Okay. Let me check over here and see what's going on there. Oh, I got Carlos Alvarez on Facebook. Easy go. Oh, five. Do batteries build a memory? I played 18 holes and still had a charge. Didn't know if I should charge it or see if it makes it another the 18th day. All right. That's a good question, Carlos. The, uh, golf cart batteries do not build a memory. They actually would rather be fully charged all the time. 
they they like to be fully charged. They will last the longest. There's no memory. You, that's, that's some stuff from long ago with uh, with older type batteries, even older than lead acid. So lead acid batteries are not gonna not gonna do that. Uh, like uh, older, you remember uh, cordless phones? Like a long time ago, they used to run off nickel cadmium batteries, and sometimes those would build a memory, and sometimes it would be good to let those batteries drain completely and then charge it back up well that's not the case with golf carts so put it on charge it likes to be fully charged it would rather be fully charged than in any other state let's see oh where am i at number two I've been working on a Yamaha G23 for use on the farm I put a three inch lift kit 20 inch tires and Roy Powell lithium battery on it now it will not move. When I turn the battery on, the solenoid clicks and I get full voltage to the controller. I thought the solenoid only engages when you press the accelerator pedal. To check the operation of the new solenoid, I check the other two wires. One is ground and the other is hot to engage the solenoid. That is correct. This stays hot all the time, thus engaging the solenoid and supplying full battery voltage to the controller at all time. A G23E Okay, does, if that has a run tow switch, if, it, if your Yamaha G23e, it's not a very common car is why I don't know. If that has a run tow switch, then you got two things involved in your activation circuit of the solenoid. One of them is the pedal stop switch, and one of them is the, the controller. The controller is involved in the activation circuit of the solenoid. So, But my guess would be your pedal, it's got to be your pedal stop switch is faulty. I know you said you checked it, but uh, if it's hot all the time, that means that circuit is closed. You know, and that pedal stop switch is part of that circuit. So how did you check? My question would be, how did you check your pedal stop switch? You know, because I'll, I'll be going back to there first. Let's see. Facebook is cool. That's cool. Where are we at? Number three. A PowerWise charger charges for hours, shuts off. I cannot even get a mile out of the charge. What could be the issue? Well, my, my question would involve battery voltages first. Uh, I'd love to see the battery voltage upon failure. Like in other words, when you say you cannot even get a mile, I'd like to see what your battery voltage is right there and make sure that, that, that that's where the problem's coming up because you gotta understand Thermal shutdown in a controller feels exactly like your batteries are going dead. So how do you know it's your batteries? You know, also, I would want to know your voltage on the batteries when the charger is, you said it charges for hours. Well, right there, if it's a amp gauge, if you have an amp gauge on your charger, once it gets close to zero, take a reading right there and see where the voltage is in your pack. On a 36 volt car, it should be up to around 46 or 48 even. On a 48 volt car, it should be close to 60 volts or even a little bit more sometimes. So you need to check and make sure that your voltage is actually getting up. That would verify if you actually are getting a full charge. And then uh, voltage readings upon failure, like I said, and then we can narrow it down from there. Because it's either going to be your batteries or your controller overheating, one of the, one of the two. And if it's your batteries, then we've got to go back and, and see what's wrong with your charger. Let's see, number four. Just bought a golf cart and the max speed I can get is around 13. I read in the manual that max speed is 19. Since I'll be using it for largely personal transport, how can I get the max speed of 19? Well, depending on what, on what car you have, it could be as simple as taking it to the dealer, whatever it is, easy go Yamaha or club car, and they plug in their special computer that only they have for their individual for the individual brands. The public doesn't have one. And then they type in a few numbers and they can speed you up right there. They can speed you back up to the max, which would probably be about 19.6. Uh, you know, that's if your car is a programmable car, if it has a programmable controller in it. So check with you, check and see if it is a you know a programmable controller and. Uh, they, now they're going to charge you for that. It takes about five minutes and they can put you back on, you know, all the way to the top. But 13 is actually normal. You know, golf carts are either going to be set, they're going to all be set 
uh, modern golf carts are going to be set somewhere between 12 and 14 miles an hour for golf course use. Uh, and then they can be changed, you know, if it's not for golf course, like what your application is going to be for personal transport, then they can be, they can be programmed up. Now that's, that's pretty much all modern cars, uh, modern golf carts can do that nowadays. Okay, let's see here. Number five. I have a 92 easy go and my cart is leaning to the left. What do you think I need to fix that? Question number five. Well, there is a fix for that. Uh, Donnie Lee, what's up, Donnie? And on Facebook, uh, my golf cart 2008 DS gas won't go backwards or forward. Or, or forward. It's not the starter generator. What is it then? It won't go backwards or forward. Okay. Does the engine crank? I mean, is, is, is that what you're saying? It's not, it won't crank or does it actually crank, but it just won't move forward or back would be my question. And the engine does crank, but it won't move forward. Okay. Or backwards. Okay. Well, is it actually going into gear? Because you know, there's a, you got a, your gear shift, you know, it's, it's a definite click or a definite, uh, what you'd call it. Uh, you can feel it mechanically go into gear and cause there's, it's attached to a cable that goes all the way back to the top of the rear end on the top of your rear end. There is a, uh, there's a, there's a lever and you can see when you put it in forward, you know, from your, uh, from your gear shift lever, that lever on top of the rear end actually <coughs> it clicks in one direction this forward and then you go in reverse and it makes that lever click in the other direction well a lot of times what you can do if you if there if the cable might be out of adjustment or something like that you can go back there to the rear end and then force that into gear with your hand on the on the rear ends and see if that's your problem but it won't go well you need to check and see if it's going into gear like but you got to look look at that at the rear end Okay, that was the number five, wasn't it? Yeah, that was five. That was a question about this leaning to the left. Okay, over time, most golf carts are going to lean to the left. Believe it or not, that's normal because a lot of times, a lot of golf carts, they tend to have just one person riding in them. And you, so you got all the weight on one side. If you're looking at it from the rear, it'd be leaning to the left. Over time, that's the rear leaf springs get weak. Our, you know, you got more weight on one side than you do on the other. So over time, that rear leaf spring gets weak. There's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, you could go buy a new set of leaf springs because obviously, if they're if you've had that car that long, those leaf springs are probably original and it's starting to lean to the left a little bit. You can go buy a new set of leaf springs. You can buy a set of heavy duty leaf springs if you would like. You know, then it, want, it uh, would, would probably last a lot longer before it started leaning again if they were heavy duty. But you could also swap them. You could rotate the rear leaf springs. You could put the, the weak one on the drive on the passenger side and put the non weak one on the driver's side. And I, that will fix your lean if you wanted to do that. In other words, rotate your rear leaf springs and that, that will fix that problem. Let's see. We got S Harris in YouTube. What's up, sir or ma'am? I have a 92 easy go marathon electric golf cart. We are replacing the two front leaf springs. One is broken have located nuts and bolts. If one breaks, what size length and, and grade do I need? Oh, okay. You just, you, you don't need grade eight bolts. Uh, you know, if you, if you feel better about using grade eight bolts, then, then do so. Sometimes I do, uh, but just regular, regular nuts and bolts would be fine, uh, for replacing those front springs. Uh, what did you, you lost the stock bolts? You lost the bolts and nuts that came out of it when it broke? Is that, is that why you're having to search some, search the, uh, search for the nuts and bolts? Let's see. Number six. I'd like to know if the speed of my 91 club car could be augmented. If yes, how? 
the 90, 91. Well, that's a, uh, I'd have, I'd have some questions. 91 is, I think that's going to be a resistor coil cart. It's either going to be a resistor coil or a bunch of solenoids or it might be the five solenoid system. So there's not really much that you can do with that without causing some issues, without replacing your entire electrical system, unless it's a controller cart. If it's a controller cart, then yeah, you, you could do things. Okay. You, so you do have the stock ones. You were just asked, uh, Harris is asking me about this on, on YouTube. Uh, you were just asking in case, in case one breaks. Yeah. You, you could go with grade eight, but five would be fine. Grade five or whatever the other, I think it's five, you know, but if you, uh, wanted to do grade eight, just to be sure that would be fine. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. 91 club car speed it up. There's a couple of things you could do. You could put a high speed motor in it, but I probably wouldn't recommend that. Uh, they, they do make a higher speed motor that would bolt right to your rear end. Uh, just because the car is a 91, that's going to put a strain on the rest of your electrical system. You could put high speed gears in it. Uh, you could put a higher speed gear set than you have now that would speed it up. The simplest thing to do to speed it up a little bit. I mean, how much are we talking about? How much do you want to speed it up? Because anything is possible. I mean, with enough money thrown at the problem, it's a, you can do whatever you want to with a golf cart. Uh, taller tires, a little bit taller tires. You could get another tire set. A little bit taller tires will actually increase your flat ground speed a little bit. All right. So if, if you're just looking for a little bit faster, then you could try some of that. Try that first and then, then go from there. But after that, you're talking probably before I would recommend doing anything else. I'd want you to change your whole electrical system to a modern, more modern electrical system. What size and length, uh, on the, on the bolts? I, I don't, I don't know that one off the top of my head. I would just, you know, get the exact same size as the, as the other one, you know, look at your other spring that's not broken or your other bolts. That's what, that's what I would do. Cause I don't, I don't know off the top of my head on a, a marathon front leaf spring. Let's see. Number seven. Let me check Facebook over here. All right. Donnie says it, it moved both ways. When I moved the gear shift, I look at the back when I did it. I'll let you get that. Get you get that straightened out there. I see. Number seven. How do I wire up a 48 volt golf cart with eight six volt batteries? That's a good question. Uh, it's, it's, it's very easy. If you'll look at your battery pack, you know, you're, you're, I guess you're going to, you're, you're modifying six, eight volt batteries to eight, six volt batteries that that'll work and it will, you'll get more range because you have, you have more lead, you're carrying around more lead that way. So you'll end up having better range. Uh, that would be a reason why somebody would want to do that. Well, if you'll notice that battery packs, golf cart battery packs are, are hooked together. The batteries are hooked together, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. Well, the only thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to install your two batteries in between that chain and wire it the exact same way. You're going to put those two batteries, you, you know, first they're going to be hooked up together, negative to positive also. And then you're going to put those two in that chain of events of negative to positive, negative to positive. And you're just going to add them to that where now you've got eight batteries connected, negative, to positive, negative, to positive, negative, to positive, to negative, to positive, all the way down the line. That's it's as simple as that. Let's see. Something to do with the cable, Donnie? What, what are you talking about there? Let's see. All right. Let's see. Number eight is where we're at. 
installed two 12 volt lights on my precedent gasoline model. I ran the lights from the battery through the through a fuse line to each of the lights. If the card is still, the lights come on. As soon as I step on the gas, the lights go off. Hmm. Okay, that's that shouldn't happen. Uh, why would they go off? I mean, uh, well, because when you step on the gas, the, the only thing I can think of, when you step on the gas, the voltage goes up. So your lights are hooked. You say your lights are hooked to your battery. You're talking about the negative line and the positive line are both hooked to your battery on the negative post and the positive post of your battery. Because you don't want to hook anything to the solenoid or anything like that. Hook to the battery itself. So if they're hooked to the battery itself, that means they're getting 12 volts. Now, or around sitting there about 12.3. Once you crank the car, you say your lights are going out. Well, the only thing that's happening once you crank the car is that the voltage in that battery goes up a little bit, not down. It goes, well, it, it goes down real quick and then it goes up and then it starts rising. It, it, it can get over 14 volts, you know, very quickly when the car cranks. So the, the, maybe the lights that you got are very voltage sensitive. And it, when that volts go down and up like that, maybe they may trigger some kind of fault. Are, are we talking about some fancy LED lights or, or what kind of lights are we talking about? But also I want to, I want to verify that you have both the negative and the positive line on the battery itself and not anywhere, not connected anywhere else. Let's see here. Harris is asking me if we replace the front springs, can I use a car leaf spring compressor? How do I tell if the springs need replacement? You have a 92, what, what do you mean? What do, why would you need a leaf spring compressor uh, on a 92 marathon? Because uh, I don't think that that's the kind of springs that they have in the front. They, they don't have coilovers, do they? Uh, they, they's got, they have leaf springs in the front. Unless someone has, has modified your car. Let's see. Number nine. Cart cuts out and loses all power. I get it back by running the key, turning the key off and then back on or pumping the pedal a few times does the trick. Oh, okay. You said, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, Harris, you're talking about, you're talking about the shocks. No, you no. those shocks. You'll, you'll be, you'll be, you're going to laugh when you take that shock off because what the deal is with that shock is that it's not doing anything. It's just, it's not holding your car up. It, you could take, you could remove your shocks and you wouldn't even tell they were gone and you, and you can go ride your car around. Your springs are holding your car up. That shock is not doing anything. You, you, you can, you'll be able to compress that shock with your hand down and you'll be able to pull it back up with your hand. So don't worry about that shock. It's not, nothing to it. John Norris. What's up, John Norris? Hey there, Tim. Better late than never. Glad to have you, man. Let's see here. Get it back by turning the key on and off. That is why I thought it was a solenoid problem. Actually, before I replaced the solenoid, it was worse, and the new solenoid did help. That is why I'm thinking maybe I need to get correct solenoid and not the universal one I bought. But I did not want to do that if the controller was going bad. Is it is not a battery problem. I have tested all the batteries and I'm getting good voltages on each battery. I have a 48 volt system. Okay. Well, if if we're talking about a club car, because you never told me what kind of car we're talking about. If we're talking about a club car, then uh it sounds like to me that it could be a intermittent M core issue. Uh, if it's an easy go, then we could be talking about an intermittent ITS micro switch because you, you, you said something about pumping the gas pedal will correct the problem sometimes. Well, anytime that's the case, I'm going to be looking at the, the component that the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal is connected to. And the first component that is on a club car is going to be the M core 
or V-Glide, depending on which car you have. And in the EasyGo, it's going to be the ITS. And there's a little micro switch in there that could be sticking on you, which are, you know could be on its way to going bad. Been changed. Let's see. All this has been changed yesterday, Donnie says. Well, if it's going into gear and it's not, and the car is cranking and it is not moving forward, then it sounds like you may have something stripped in the rear end. All right. Number 10, it's going to be the last question, the last scheduled question, but we're going to, we're going to stay here for a minute after this. Um, see if I can catch up on the chat people. Steering on my club car D DS has become difficult over time. Are there any adjustments that I can make without taking it to a shop? Thanks for your reply. Okay. Uh, I used to be the maintenance guy for a golf course and I had 55 club car DS that I was responsible for and to, to keep going. And I ran into that issue. I ran into steering was getting uh, difficult over time because I, I wasn't at the golf course. I wasn't one of the cart guys. You know, they just, all the, all the cart guys do at a golf course is they rinse the car off and go put it on the charger, you know, rinse the car off, put it on the charger. That's all they do. They don't do any maintenance or anything like that to the golf cars. I was the mechanic that would have to go to the golf course and pick up these cars and then take them to my shop and fix them and bring them back. So I had some complaints if you know, that it's hard steering on these cars. Well, I would bring them to my shop and what I would find is there's an alamite on the spindles, the spindles where the, where the wheels are mounted. And I'd try to put the grease gun to it and hit the, and it, grease would not be go into the spindle. Wouldn't, it would not go past the alamite. So I'd end up having to take the spindle off and check the alamite out. And it hadn't been greased. The, these cars had never been greased in so long that all the grease just froze and just became solid. And I had to literally would have to dig the grease out of the other side of the alamite and then remove the kingpin from the spindle and scrape the kingpin off, scrape all the old grease off of, and get that flowing again, get that maintenance spot flowing again, open to accept a grease gun and to accept grease into the spindle. Once you get grease into the spindle, the steering would clear up. So what you can do to test to see if what I'm saying is your, is your issue or not, you can raise the front end of the golf cart up, raise the front end off the ground with a floor jack or, or whatever you can disconnect the tie rod ends off of each spindle. Like take the tie rod end off of the spindle, then grab your tire and turn it with your hands left and right and see if it, see if it turns freely or not. T check the other one, see if it turns freely or not. If not, that's where your problem is. If they, if they turn freely, then your, then your problem is either in your steering box or it's in your steering column, you know, one or the other. The most likely place is in your spindles. The next, the next place would probably be your steering box and the next likely place would be your steering column. So that's only, it's in one of those three things. And by the way, you can disconnect your steering column from your, your steering box and test that and see if it spins freely. But I'm betting that it's your spindles. I'm betting that that's the place where it's at. All right, let's see. Remember, to follow us on social media platforms. They're, they should be on the screen right now. We've got TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff. Just remember to, to click on those if you want to follow us on that. If you like this content, then like and subscribe and you'll get notified every time that I, uh, uh, every time before I, before I go live. If you want to talk to me about golf cart stuff, just always remember that you can go to golfcartgarage.com, click on the gearheads on demand section and you can schedule an appointment with me where I will call you and I'll talk to you about your golf cart related issue on the phone. I can even turn it into a video session if, if need be. And sometimes, sometimes a phone call is, is completely fine. Let's see. John Norris says, any chance you saw another one of my lengthy emails come through? Now I have not John, I was just, just that one, but 
the there's a person at golf cart garage that gets all the emails and then they assign it to me i just i may not have it, it may be in my box i'll have to go check it did you send me something did you send me something else to uh i, I haven't seen it today but i'm i'll check i'll check it just after i get off the air let's see let's see okay now for this week's tips this week's tip I think I already covered it, but let me let me check Facebook before I start. I went out to try it and it moved backwards. Donnie Lee, you can you can uh, go to golfcartgarage.com, click on the Gearheads on Demand section, and you can schedule an appointment, and I will call you and talk with you about your issue directly. Uh, Okay, this week's tip. Yeah, I did give it already. It's a, it was in one of the earlier questions. If your golf cart's leaning to the left, which is this is normal, then it is most likely a weak rear leaf spring. Okay, you can do one of two things. You can buy a new set of leaf springs and replace them both, and that will fix your problem. Or you can rotate the ones that are there and put the weak one on the passenger and the and the good one on the driver. Join. Oh, John. Jen Slinger Norris says he sure did. Another golf cart joined the harem. And it's an interesting case study. Well, I'd like to hear about it, John. Uh, I'll, I'll check that email. Anthony Moore. How does our questions get out? How does our questions get out of the top 10 for that day? What do you mean there, Anthony? How does our questions get out of the top 10 for that? Oh! You say you, you had a question and, and it didn't get brought up. Well, that's, that doesn't mean that it won't. It's just, uh, it just, it didn't get on to, to the top 10. Uh, what was your question? I'll see if I can answer it. John, Jen Slinger Norris, I have a question to ask you. Do you own a bar? Are you a bartender? Jen Slinger, and you said uh, you made me that unlimited beer offer in Vegas. I was just curious. Okay, Donnie, you did set an appointment with me for February 9th on Facebook. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I will, I'll talk to you about it. Uh, I'll be there. It, uh, it was an homage to a previous life as a bartender here in Las Vegas. Oh, okay, I see. I got you. Used to sling a lot of gin. <laughs> yep, I bet you did in Vegas. I bet you did. All right. So we did the we did the tip about rotating the rear springs. We talked about the hard steering. That was the title of this episode. It was about the hard steering. And we have gotten that. That's about it for me. I did the social media links in case everybody didn't see that. There's the social media links if you'd like to follow us. Also, if you like this content, subscribe and it will be appreciated. I want to thank everybody for coming into the live chat today. Ricky, Mason, Harris, John, Anthony. Cool. Appreciate you guys. What would be the correct tire pressure, Harris is asking. Well, normal golf cart tires, the correct tire pressure is 22 PSI. Now, I don't know exactly what tires you have on your cart. It could be, you know, if it's not, if they're not normal. But anyway, all tires have it written on the side. If you look, it might be very small. It might be hard to see, but there will be max PSI written on the side of the tire. But 22 would be stock, 22 PSI would be stock golf cart tire pressure. Okay. He says thanks. Well, thank you, man. All right. I guess I'm going to be out of here until next uh, next Tuesday. 
I'll see everybody on Tuesday. Uh, remember, go to golfcartgarage.com. Let's see. Also, there is the coupon code. Almost forgot. Get 5% off any parts you order at Golf Cart Garage. Use the code TIM7 at checkout. TIM7. This code expires on February 10th. So get 5% off. Go to golfcartgarage.com. TIM7 at checkout. All right. That's going to be about it for me today, guys. I will see y'all later. Uh, the garage is now closed.